Welcome back, everyone. I think because of the special town meeting in October, it seems like we never stopped meeting, but, <laughs> but we did a little bit, but it's good to see everybody. Um, and I'd like to um, introduce our newest member, Michael Woodman. Hi. Um, why don't we, um, what, Michael, why don't you say a little bit about yourself and then we'll go around and introduce ourselves. They didn't have enough to do on Monday and Wednesday nights. <laughs> That's you well. Well. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so thank, thank you. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd for, for policy and, and, and official functions and things like that. I counted once, I had at least three copies of Robert's Rules of Order at home on different bookshelves. Um, I don't know. I like scrutinizing minutia. And I understand that. <laughs> you have already hit the ground running because you've already met with the finance budgets, financial budgets yes. working group. So that's great. Yeah, have to be great. careful. He's not a story. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go around the room. I think you know many of us, but not all of us. And if we could just tell, say our names and what precincts we represent. I am Christine Deschler. I'm the chair. As you know, and I represent Precinct 19. Let's go this way, Josh. Uh, Josh Lobel, Precinct 8. Joe Hyde, Precinct 15. Dean Carmen, Precinct 20. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. Charlie Foster, Precinct 10. Dave McKenna, Precinct 21. Sophie Miliato, at large for Precinct 4. Grant Gibby and Cloda. I think it's 9. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think you're, I think you're at 18. You're 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 18. you are and um, Carolyn White just yes. walked in. Carolyn, we're introducing ourselves. Um, what Carolyn precinct do you represent? Six. Six. All right. <laughs> um, so I'm very happy to um, introduce our new member. Um, up until a week ago or so, we had a full complement of 21. Unfortunately, I have to say that Shane Blundell has resigned. Um, reluctantly, he got a new job, which is taking consuming all of his time. Right now. And I think you can all understand that situation. I made him promise that once his job settles down, uh, he might consider coming back uh, when, he, when he gets into a routine. So. I don't think that job's going to settle down. No. Head of what is the legislative job? liaison for a state executive office of health and human services? Uh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not. He, he has a, he's a big load on his plate. Yes. So, um, so I completely understand. And um, he, was, he got that job in the fall and he continued to help out with the kind of stuff. And they finally said, too much. So that is a loss, but we have gained. Um, I believe it. So um, that is good. Um, so um, the the game plan for tonight, um, we will um, first of all we'll re review and approve um, the minutes of the last two meetings that we had in October. Um, then I want to spend a few minutes talking about scheduling for the next few weeks, few months. Um, and if we have anybody who can update us on any um, off-season efforts, any working groups, any liaisons, having information for us. Um, and then I think we have some budgets tonight. So that is fabulous. Uh, I really appreciate people getting, um, getting those budgets ready from the get-go. Um, before we start with minutes, I will make one plug for those people who have not yet completed the ethics training. Um, I see heads like avoiding my eyes right now. I'm looking I'm right at you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly now who has not done it and who has. And um, I myself only did it like late Friday night. Um, so 
Um, so complete it, and um, Tara, you will be tasked with the being the repository of the, the certificates of completion. Um, and I'm going to have Tara tell me who has not done them, um, and I will start by the people individually if they haven't started, you know, if you haven't completed them within the, let's say, the next few years. Um, all right, so with that, uh, I guess it's minutes, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so first up is October 5th, which was completely remote, where we were talking about special town meeting. Was that completely remote? Yes. I think this was. We just oh, no, yeah, okay, someone, some people were, yeah, so oh, okay, it's a hybrid, okay. So that'll be one thing to update. Does everyone have the minutes? Has everyone reviewed? Or does anyone see, other than um, noting that it was a hybrid meeting, does anyone have any corrections to the minutes of October 5th? Uh, Dave. Yeah. Can you tell me if I participated in that meeting? I, I, I don't remember. Um, yes, you were there. This was the discussion. About it's just the, come back. This was the years. Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any uh, I don't see anyone uh, raising their hand for correction. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of October 5th? So moved. Uh, is it seconded? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. Uh, All opposed? Any abstentions? Mike, one abstention. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, 13, four, zero against one abstention. I abstain as well. I was there. Well, four and one. Yep. All right. Four and two. Yeah. Four and two. All right. Next is Are Tuesday the seventeenth. And this was in the town manager conference room. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 I don't think so. The four special no, town meeting. It was, right. it was before special town meeting. Right. Yeah. Yes, okay. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that Right. So was the other one actually at the special town meeting then, or at the? the I think no, it was here. I it was it. okay. Uh, All I remember right. It being here that session. All right. Um, any corrections, revisions to the minutes of October seventeenth? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 All right. All in favor, raise your hand. Thirteen, thirteen. Uh, um, any opposing and abstentions? One. Okay. All right. So the minutes are completed. All right. Um, schedule on. All right. First of all. Everyone could plan to attend FinCon meetings every Monday and Wednesday until we finish, except we won't be meeting on President's Day, Monday the 19th. I think right now we're going to, I think we should plan that the default will be in person meetings um, unless otherwise announced. Notified. Um, for example, if we have a snow day or for whatever reason, uh, maybe we have people presenting who can't um, get their group all in, um, I'll, I'll figure that out. But uh, the default will be in person meetings here Mondays and Wednesdays. If there is a day when we don't have enough on an agenda um, to make it worthwhile to meet, I will cancel that meeting, but I will let everyone know. I the other thing about scheduling, um, 
I would like to complete our work by Monday, March 25th. Um, I would like to have all of everything voted on, buttoned up by then, all the presentations, all the budgets done, um, so that um, Al Jones and Tara and I can start working on the report. Um, and I we might leave maybe April, um, Wednesday, April 3rd, as a back update to um, button anything up that needs to be buttoned up. We have to revote something, maybe we'll do it then. But I really would like everyone to strive to have all of their budgets done and presented by the 25th of March. Oh, okay. Okay, so the 19th at first, the 25th. The 25th of March, yeah. Okay. The 19th is tight because of uh, the insurance really doesn't come in until then. So we need to plan on having health insurance be at one of the last two right. meetings. Right. So that, okay. Right. So for those of you who do have those budgets that we really do have to wait. I want to make sure that they're, they're done as soon as at, soon after yeah. you can do them. Yeah. But I want all the other budgets done before then so that we can dedicate those meet those late meetings to things that can't be done sooner than that. Okay. Um, also, um, let's see. Capital planning is coming in on Wednesday, March 6th. So mark your calendar for that. And Minutepan will be coming in on Monday, March 11th. For those things we know, um, we've already scheduled. We know about public schools? No. So I'm going to ask um, the, the schools working group to try to get the schools in, you know, ideally, the 18th or the 20th of March. March. That's possible. I last year we had them in on like the 21st. Okay. Uh, capital planning and capital planning is in on March 6th and Minuteman is in on March 11th. The other group we need to schedule is um, um, community preservation which last year I recall was somewhat of a chore getting them to respond. So we might just give them a date um, and tell them to take it to the um, um, So you and I can talk about that. Okay. Um, Al Tosti is going, has agreed to be our warrant review officer. And for Michael, what that means is when we get the draft warrant. <clears throat> um, Tossie will look through it and see which ones we typically, uh, which ones we always um, have a meeting on uh, to discuss, and which warrant articles we might want to consider having proponents in to discuss with us, and then um, then and we schedule those. So he will take the first crack at that, and I'll work with Alan on that. Um, so as soon as um, we have a draft warrant, we'll get those out to you, get that out to you. Um, anything else about scheduling? Any questions people have? Everyone knows that town meeting is starting later, a day later, two days later this yes. year. Oops. Um, um, So I don't know when that, how that works out to when our report needs to be done, but I want to work on it, start working on it soon, sooner rather than later, which is a big reason why I want us to finish our work on the 25th or by the 25th. All right. Um, that is all I have about that. Um, working groups and liaisons. Um, a couple of people already have been acting as liaisons, and I just want to confirm that they'll continue to do that this season. My first one is arts and culture, Annie. Yep. You're, you're on board with that. Sophie, you have been working with the Disability Commission. Are you still? Yep. Great. Um, Carolyn, you yep. volunteered to do some work, uh, water bodies. Yes. 
And I'm pushing that they actually request more money. So just as a warning. Uh, yeah, no machines. Hmm? No machines. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, um, do you know if the Water Bodies Group has talked to the Capital Planning Committee at all? I'll ask them that. We have a meeting, I think we moved it to this coming Monday. Yeah. Maybe Daryl, you know that answer. Daryl, Michael, Daryl is our um, Capital Planning Committee liaison, designee. And do you know if Water Bodies has asked for any capital money? No, no they haven't. Okay. I'll bring that up. We have our department person um, is out on our leave. So that sort of changed things a bit right now, but it's a it's a very active volunteer group. Are, are they looking for money, capital money for this year? Not no. Oh, okay. I, say that. I think the, the last plan. <laughs> <laughs> right. The plan is already yes, exactly. Exactly. Last year's discussion, as I recall, there were suggestions that they pursue capital funding for these bigger projects that seem to be taking down the road. So, uh, so we'll have them in. And Carolyn, maybe you can be in charge of shepherding them in earlier rather than later. Sure. So you can figure out when they'll be, as soon as it, they'll be available, come meet with us. Okay. Can I ask where, where the articles in the warrant come from that have to do with uh, the business functioning of the town, like you know, borrowing authority and uh, the stuff like that that's more managerial than actual you know, wants and requests? These are, those are things that are included every every year. Do they come from us? I think they, no, the town manages. Um, I believe the only people who have the right to insert an article automatically are the select board, the ARB, and the Child Finance Committee. Say it again? Child Finance Committee. Okay. We don't do it. The town manager. The town manager. What can I just for, for a point, Michael? So, um, administrative and like borrowing will it will go in as a standard article. But it will get wrapped into the capital planning presentation. And when they come through, they ask us to vote on three things. The first is the capital budget, and the second is borrow. So it gets reviewed there. Um, last year, the junior high school kids, yeah. um, if, you, if you remember, they had. Yeah. That um, they came to us and yep. asked for money, and everyone's surprised, including us. We said yes, and they really did a nice presentation to town meeting. But we made it, made it contingent that they were going to report back to us. Um, does do a couple of people, probably people who are involved with that group, want to follow up with them? Sure. So who's who's, who's volunteering? I'll do it. So, yeah, I had one of the I had one of the performance in my living room most weekends. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's really not a hard thing to follow up on. So you'll let us know whether or not we need to feed them all about head and shoulders for failing to volunteer. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and some are freshmen, and some most they're all freshmen. freshmen. Yeah, they're most yeah. freshmen. Yeah. Um, well, there was one that was was a year younger, so she's still in eighth grade, but maybe she's dropped off and is on working on something. Else. But it would also have been on. Either Charlotte or, or the, teacher. the teacher, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the teacher or the the DPW stuff. To right. Yeah, well, Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think much of the responsibility was Charlotte's, okay. and the money wasn't supposed to be spent and put on the list. Right. Only under the direction of the right. manager. So, um, all right. So maybe it was also an email to yeah Ms. Millen to say, did this happen? Yeah. yeah. So if um. You know, I'm happy to send Charlie and you to follow up from that side. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay, I would have to school every day. Oh, my I just thought about it. <laughs> I expect they will be well ahead of it. Yeah, I know. 
All right, so Dean and Annie will follow up on that. Yeah, you know, I actually, I just thought about it. I drive for another one of the performers to school every morning. All right. So I'm going to hit them with it tomorrow morning. All right. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> Before they're in. <even laughs> <way. laughs> Don't mess up with their presentation. They did a good job. Right. They did. I'm scared. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I forgot. What, what did the little darlings ask for? $5,000. Or? 14 restaurants would participate in a 12 month pilot on composting with one of the compost companies that already works in town um, to demonstrate that it was a valid uh, process that more of the restaurants in town should participate in. And I asked Kickstand and she said, we already do that. So we, we're not gonna be one of the people they asked. So there are some restaurants or, or coffee shops already doing it and they're trying to convince others. A good awareness raising campaign is yeah. right. Right. All right. So thank you, Dean, and thank you, Annie. Um, I know the DPW people were going to do some research into our motor vehicle equipment repair division, but it, none of them, neither of them are here tonight. I don't think. Jordan, Jordan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, so, <laughs> so. Uh, I spoke with Jennifer last week and uh, we're scheduled to meet with DPW um, when uh, I think next, not this Friday, but the following Friday. So we're going to uh, discuss a few things with them. All right. All right. Keep us posted. All right. Um, anything else anyone is working on that I've left off? List. All right, well, with that, I think we have some budgets to go through. Um, so a uh, as an educational point for Michael and also a reminder for everyone else, we have what we call the John Alex rule, which means it is on you all to um, look at the budgets before they're presented and get your questions to that working group responsible for that budget. So, uh, for example, Daryl and John are working on police, fire, and inspectional services. So it's on you to look at those budgets and get them there for your questions so that when they come to present their budget, they have answers to your questions. The point being, we want to avoid Daryl presenting, Daryl and John presenting, and then having questions that they can't answer and we can't vote on that budget, we have to delay it. So tonight um, we have some budgets that maybe people weren't um, prepared to, to look into. So I'll be a little bit more tolerant if people have questions. Um, and we also have some time and I think that the people who are presenting the budgets won't uh, probably know the answer anyway, but they can probably get answers to the question pretty quickly in, in time for the next meeting. But from here on forward, you've got to look at the budgets and get your questions to whoever is responsible for those budgets. And those, those who are getting those questions try to get the answers um, ready. So, so again, we're trying to avoid having to postpone voting on a budget so that somebody can get an answer to the questions. Now, having said that, there will be some important questions that come up and some issues that, that legitimately we, sh we should postpone the budget so we can get that information. But whenever possible, get your questions in uh, and uh, we can try to be efficient and, and uh, meet that March 25th deadline. Yeah. Um, can, can you try and post in the agendas maybe out a week or so what, what budgets might yeah. be coming up? What I would like to do is at the end of every meeting, I'm going to ask people who will who expects to have budgets ready. I We know now, right, Daryl, you you are thinking of Monday or next Wednesday? Or next Monday. Budget. We should be able to do police fire and inspections. And those are big budgets, so um, take a look at them. 
And uh, before we break tonight, I'll ask if anyone has any budgets that they can take them into. Can I just add something? Yeah. I also have a um a tracker. Um, and so in the tracker, there's like a schedule. So as we know about things that are coming up, I am adding it to the schedule. But we wouldn't put it on the agenda because then if we um can't vote on it or yeah. we're stuck with it. We're, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. If a budget comes up and we can handle it, I'd rather have to handle it rather than say, oh, we can't until it's posted. Charlie. Madam Chair, you asked uh, the, the town manager to be prepared to talk about the $600,000 shortfall. Yes. On Wednesday? Yes. I'm actually meeting with him tomorrow. Um, and we all, uh, it's a good reminder that on Wednesday night, the town manager will be in talks about, to us about his proposed budget, the current long range plan, and any uh, other issues and, and uh, concerns that are. So and I expect that that will take up, typically takes up mm -hmm. most of the meeting. Um, so, um, so take a look at um, the long range plan and come mm -hmm. with your questions uh, to the town manager. This, this is the opportunity. Grant. Thank you, uh, Grant. Um, Carolyn, did you have a firm date on that? So the insurance mm -hmm. um, numbers matter for the infamous water and sewer budget right. as well. And I am a little concerned about the, because I, they get the insurance number, but I don't get the changes until, you know, five days later or something, if I'm lucky. So what date is that that they're so say, saying that they're going to have the numbers? Mid-March. Mid yeah, oh, no, no firm date. Yeah. Um, and, but, but I am picking up as the lead on that, and I didn't know you needed numbers so fast. So let me make a note that I have to make sure I or Karen or Alex get your number. Uh, sure. What am I supposed to? I don't think you're supposed to do anything. I think that comes from someone else. You yeah, yeah but it's probably Alex or, or uh, well, whoever's in or, um, uh, handling it. Okay. <laughs> and this too are questions that we can ask the town manager and yeah. deputy. I thought I thought there was a date. I thought I heard the date mentioned. So, oh, yeah. but there's no date. Okay, thank you. And uh, yeah, so you know, I think you have other questions too about water and sewer. You might want to ask. Two, one <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? Issues before we go into budgets. All right, who has budgets ready? Dave, you want to start? David, so yeah. Dave I Sophie. think the first budget we need to start with is our own funded budget. And um, what Sophie and I had, had realized is that there was a um, right off the bat there was an error. And good uh, job. Okay. Uh, so, in the book, on page, <clears throat> well, it's not good night, but on page 20, you'll notice in the salary and wage of 5100 line, there's a change of $550. Uh, what happened there was that was picked up twice. That that change is actually in the, uh, the current budget that we're in. And the $550 was when former member Peter Howard was the recording secretary. He was re he received a stipend of 550. Well, since he uh, left the finance committee, Chara was willing to take that, that position over and transfer the 550 to her, in addition to her salary. And um, so uh, we brought it to the uh, budget directors, actually the deputy town managers, uh, and there's a, a new page coming along. So that 550 is uh, dropped. It's already included in uh, the 89003 line. This happened last year when we mm -hmm. voted the numbers and we populated them here in the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. So this year we just attacked the report and so we had a great number in front of us. So it should be updated in their system. So it's 
could not be a problem for next week. Alan, do you need a copy of this? I got you. Guys. So having uh, said that, uh, the, the, the budget figure for us would be 11,844, uh, 48, excuse me, 11,848. And just with like all other salaries and wages that are in all our budgets, and I think it was in the explainer, but uh, the whole numbers haven't been put in yet for the year. So um, even even on our small budget, there will be a small increase once they finalize those total numbers. So that's the case for everybody. Saying it could change. And they're all going to go all gonna go yeah, change. They're all going to go up. Yeah, that's one. Let's explain to us. Yeah. So it won't affect ours by much because the numbers aren't very high. Right. Just yeah. I think it was an explainer. It was. Yeah. 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 Any questions about the FinCom budget? What is the otherwise unclassified number? I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. That's okay. What's um, otherwise unclassified? For us? Yeah. Those are the, the trainings and seminars that we oh that we go that we go to and pay. That is a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. And, and the the report of Okay. Okay. Will we need to revote the budget once that increases, or would that be under like the elasticity? I think it is. I mean, sell it reserve. Yes. So, oh, okay. So that could cover those um, increases. Um, any other questions? Are you making a recommendation? I move to accept the, the, new, the new figure of 11,848. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, unanimous. We're back in a thousand so far. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other budget? I don't know. We're probably going to have to re it. <laughs> <laughs> After another day. Yeah, why don't we do one? We've do? actually met with everybody. Well, take <laughs> it away. <laughs> take it away. What next? We, we were we've been camping out at the town hall for the last week and a half. <laughs> but, which one do you know? You from the selectmen is right in the next line, so sure. But then we're going to go to the selectmen budget, which is on page so that's twenty. It starts on twenty three. Um, I can start. Yeah. So. Uh, so starting at the top with the salaries and the wages, um, I think the, in, so the decrease is just a, a change in Marie left and a change in positions throughout. The one thing we want to highlight here is the vacant position, um, for principal clerk and typist. This has been vacant since July, 2021. We bring it up every year and talking to them and we'll bring it up to you at the committee. Um, since 2021, the FTE has dropped from 1.02 to 0.54 in last year's budget. So there's less money for that spot, but they keep carrying that vacancy. Uh, it was explained to us that what happens is it's the chair of the select board is the one that determines whether to fill that position. And the chair position changes every year. Mm -hmm. So by the time the office convinces one to hire, Mm -hmm. the term's up and it goes to the next one who says, no, we don't need to hire. And that's what's been going on. So my follow-up question or our follow-up question was, well, how much is going to free cash since this has been a vacant position? So prior to the vacancy, only 4,000 was going to free cash from the select board. Since it's been vacant, um, it was at 51,000 to free cash in 2022. Fiscal year 23, it's 66,600 about. And it's going to be about the same for fiscal year 24. So question, I guess, for the committee is, you know, is that reasonable <laughs> to have that much going to free cash uh, continuously that, you know, two years in a row, fiscal year 24 will be three years. Yes. So my father would be to tell them that this is the last year we're going to do this. 
that if they don't get the current chair, get his act together and let them hire somebody, we won't carry it forward. Then they'll have to come back as a separate request when they finally get the convinced to hire. It just seems crazy. Somebody will label this user lose. If I could, uh, yeah. One of the things that they had mentioned it, mm -hmm. they being uh, not the board, mm -hmm. not the board itself, but a number of years ago, when uh, COVID nineteen hit, and we, we had mm -hmm. uh, then the board administrator was out sick. Mm -hmm. If you remember, well, it ended up they only had one person. Now that but staff was out on maternity leave. So they only ended up having one person in the selectman's office working. Mm -hmm. And then my understanding is that chairman at that time was concerned not to, if, if something happened, they did have to hire at least a part time. Right. There hasn't been a part time, that, that in my memory, that part time position, well, that has been vacant. But I, I remember the lady that used to work there. Yeah. Us an, and right. what they did do, though, is they had, they, when she left, they hired Ashley Ma mm -hmm. part time. She, she had a position between the board and the building department. Yeah. And then, but then when she became full time, they left that position open. That's where it's worded properly. So, so with, with three people, so they did use a part time position. I think it was a bit, a few hours last year when Marie passed and then. One of the office um, personnel was on leave, so you only ended up with one person in the office. And instead of filling the position, they just used some of the money to hire a part-time position for a while. For a short, very short time. So they like to have that flexibility. I, again, we have never spoke. We have never spoken directly to any of the select. Right. We don't. We only we talk to the board administrator. See, is that a the select board budget roll up under the town manager's cap, or is it outside of it? It's select. It's a gray area. I'm on the The reason I bring it up is so when I first joined the finance committee, I went to review the comptroller's budget, and I found out that there was a $65,000 line item in the middle of Ruth's budget that she never spent. It was for like um, telephone switches. Mm -hmm. We didn't have telephone switches. And I was like, well, Ruth, why do you have this here? And she's like, well, if I zero it, it's just going to get spent somewhere else. <laughs> and she's like, so I've decided as a financial best practice not to spend it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And so then one of the things I, what, what, it was funny when she said it, right? One of the things I tended to appreciate from that discussion is the way we budget is we give these people caps of 3% growth or this or that or the other thing. So if you remove it, you're just, it's just going to go at, they'll just add a position somewhere else. You're actually not saving the tax budget money, you're not saving the government any money, you don't need to get greater efficiency, you're just going to transfer the cost somewhere else, right? right? And so, why I say that is over the years, especially when the schools like last year's have had trouble spending all their money and it's been dropping out into free cash, it never really bothers me because I, it doesn't seem like you want to force someone to spend money, right? And that's not mm -hmm. our position, we, have, we don't have as many a use it or lose it right. philosophy so but i think my question or at least our question in bringing this up is just so that we are aware of it because if they decide to fill it that's sixty six thousand that's going to disappear from free cash which is maybe not that much and won't be noticed but it's not so, but if but if they need it but if they right. but if at some point they say we need another person okay. Can I just say one more thing? Uh, first, Annie, then Rebecca, and then Dee. So my counter argument to that would be, it's really great that we end up with all of this free cash. But here it is, and it is 2025, that's by 2025, and we're looking out five years, and there's this big red number. And that big red number is totally not real because these guys are turning in $66,000. So as long as everybody here agrees not to panic about the big red number five years out, fine. Otherwise, get it off the page so that we don't have a big, a big red number slightly smaller. That's what it is. So and a rant. Rebecca, um, I just want to clarify a question. When you say sixty 
six thousand or sixty thousand. If the if it's budgeted for about twenty five thousand, is the extra money from the benefits and the? Well, I guess she gave us the number. So maybe fiscal year twenty four. She was thinking it would be about the same, but fiscal year twenty four is the first time it was dropped to point five uh, four. Okay. And so the sixty six thousand six hundred was from fiscal year twenty three when it was still a one point oh. Okay. So yes, so she was saying it. She was expecting it to be the same as fiscal year twenty three with what she's looking at, but maybe yeah. it won't be as much because now this has dropped. So, so maybe they've already kind of compromised it for you in the sense that they've cut it by half. Um, if it's if it's in fact a half time position that's unfilled, it's... <laughs> right? So, but <laughs> it's like even though it's vacant every year. Right, right. But when you first noticed this, it was a full time position. Yes. And so it's continued to be vacant, but they've reduced the hours. It was right. Fiscal year 22, fiscal year 23, vacant as a full time position. Fiscal year 24 is the first time it's vacant as a point five four. All right, Dean? Yeah. I'll pass. Grant. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. This this is kind of sort of a, again another standard practice in, in all of the salary details. We all have vacant positions, and many of them don't go. I shouldn't say we all, but there's many vacant positions that either don't get filled or that they juggle around. And so uh, I think it's kind of standard practice. It seems to me. So correct me, but it seems like that's kind of what we do. Given that it is. Position that has been decreased in hours. I'm not concerned about it myself, um, but I think it's something to continue to watch. Um, I think it may reach a point where Annie, what you're arguing, becomes uh, more powerful. But at this point, since the hours seem to be tracking and not not stable at the whole time. Or expanding. Um, Carolyn, do you have any um, Other departments hire contract people now and then when they need people to get certain work done. Um, this is sounding like it's more of a contract job for part of the year. Um, I suppose we could leave it as a vacant position, but if they're only using 30% of an FTE, what do they think about dropping it to point three? rather than 0.54. I will say it's also we've asked what this position does. I think we asked them that last year too. I mean, their idea is if it were filled, it's to help with town day and um, overflow with traffic, the the the, tech, the, the traffic committee um, yeah, they work know. with the select board tech. 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 Um, they call it tech. So it's to help with those specific thing. There is the big 250th anniversary coming up. So they didn't feel the need to fill it yet, but maybe as work picks up on that 250th anniversary, um, they want to fill it. We just, it, the reason we were bringing it up is because when you just look at the report, salaries looks like it's just going down 2.71%, but then there's this hidden situation that, that you know, it was worth clarifying for everybody um, going forward. So, if should we just keep going down the numbers still? Or, yep. Yeah. Um, longevity, no big change. Really, that it's just uh, over the years. You know, Marie left, and she had the, the biggest longevity, and now it's just small increases every year. Uh, longevity, just sort of as a refresher, it's 1% um, 5 to 9 years in, 2% 10 to 14 years in, 3% 15 to 19 years in, and then you're maxed out at 5%. The line for uh, advertising hasn't changed. It's the cost of the legal notices for private ways, liquor license, uh, marijuana licenses, all that. Um, the 5215 telephone is the, the, tel the one telephone line for the board administrator. Dues and subscriptions, um, there is, they're expecting actually a modest increase in that. That's not reflected here because this number is based on the bill they got last summer. Mm -hmm. This summer's bill will be higher with an increase of 2.5%. 
she said to go ahead and keep this 13,000 in, but it will, we were expecting to see the increased number this year, but she's decided to keep it at 13,000 this year and it will increase next year. Um, and that's just a, a reflection of, of the bill that comes in for the, the dues and subscriptions. There's, they can't control that. Um, office supplies increased, obviously, once everybody came back to the office from the years and otherwise unclassified is more for gifts for retiring members, for example. Um, and historically, since we see some numbers under otherwise unclassified, it used to be for printing article, war the warrant printing, but that's been moved to another line item in the budget. So if you're looking at historical figures, that, that explains that change. And the audit reports, this is, uh, we discussed this in the past. They don't, the controller handles it, but it's under the select board budget. And we asked why they keep budgeting 78,000, even though it's about 10,000 less. Um, but that's just what they do. <laughs> that, that, that figure came when, uh, not the current controller, but with the oh, it is, yeah. rich. Yeah. Rich. Rich. Yeah, I can't yeah. think of this guy. He, he suggested just at that time when the controller had come under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen, he suggested that increase at $78,000, which they did the following year. And it's been that way since. So maybe it seems to go up every year a little bit when you look at the actuals. I think it'll be a while before it gets to $78,000. Right. Well, the simple answer is when Rich was gave became comfortable started issuing an annual comprehensive financial report the yes. first year in order to move to the ACFR to do additional work and because it was additional work to additional bill. So he stuck a larger number in there and then he just kept it there forever. Yeah. So another <laughs> but that's not what it costs now. Right. And we know because we have historical figures. I mean it does go up in the actual so it looks like about two thousand a year. So yeah when you add that on to the other um <clears throat> vacant position. I mean, can we get them to drop it to 70? I guess we can ask. I don't know. Well, how do you feel, feel about it? <clears throat> Says Charlie? Charlie and Dean. It, it seems to me that they should be getting a quote from the auditing company on an annual basis. So it shouldn't be a mystery. I guess what? In that's the way the auditing companies generally work. Hmm. Well, so we're kind of hitting on it twice. I'll make this okay. statement. So professionally speaking, use or lose budgeting is a road to disaster. Okay. It is the worst thing you can do. Any kind of hit it, but I'll hit it the way it actually plays out. Okay. When you tell people, if you don't use it, you lose it, they use it. And so one of the interesting things we have at Arlington is we have all of these large returns back to free cash. If you don't spend it, eh, you don't lose it. What will happen if we draw a hard line and say, you're going to lose it, you're going to lose it. People will do what they always do, right? What happens right now is you pull it, you pull it. 20 years this. Q1 ends, which is July 1 to September 30th. 25% of the budget doesn't get spent. All the salaries do, but the expenses go. Q2, same thing. Q3, same thing. Then at the end, they figure out how much money they have, and they have to do some additional spending, things like that, right? If, you, if we draw it too hard of a line, people will get to Q4 and spend the entire budget and they will draw it to zero. And you'll see the precipitous decline in free cash because, hey, I'm gonna lose my money if I don't get it. When I need it, I'm not gonna have it. So I'm gonna go use, and they're not gonna spend it on good things. They're gonna spend it on kind of gross things, right? And, and we like to think in our head that as a finance committee, we can fix that and we can manage that and all that. But we end up, what we end up doing is a better thing, which is we don't beat people to death over these returns these large things. And then we have some, like any said, some little drama that occurs where we say the plan's going to run out in three years and hell, all hell's going to freeze over. And then, oh, found money. Now it's another year. Oh, found money. Now it's another year. That's a better way to do it than to actually run out of money in year three because people were spending every last second so they didn't lose it. Are you going to make that speech the next time we know right? You and I do this every year. We do this every year. We do this every year. We do this. The world's going to end. Okay. Oh. All right. Um, Charlie and then Al John. I think the basic issue here is the, um, and, and Dean made an allusion to it before, the 
selectman's budget and all these other budgets in the town side are under this, uh, I guess, three and a quarter percent growth cap. Mm -hmm. um, it's too high. And we're taxing people that we sh shouldn't be taxing. That's mm -hmm. the issue. And, and if, the, if, the, if the growth rate were more realistic, then uh, we wouldn't have this problem. And, and, and the manager, manager, the town manager and department managers can better manage their budget within a realistic uh, set of bounds. Um, addressing the <coughs> issue, can money and appropriate in this line item be used for anything other than the other reports? I don't think it has historically. I was just wondering whether whether uh, they, they could use it to buy more you know pencils or whether they can uh, because I mean, these are the, the, the beautiful thick ACFR glossy right. brochures which I don't think are produced by the auditor I think they're they're independently printed right. I would like to see a reduction because they probably don't need as many printed copies as they used to and in the world of electronics I don't know if they need that right it seems like they're so, putting out fewer copies I know it's an expensive right I gloss. think when we were talking about that. Well, maybe this is 60. I think when looking at, at the select board's budget, it's sometimes different than looking at other departments where there's so much going on in so many projects because this is just basically salaries and an audit report. And there's no activity projects being. So it's not like at the end of the year, we're looking to spend it on something if we right. cut down. It's, I think it's different than other budgets. Yeah, I think this might be an exception to what right. you're saying. Because it's, you know, how many of these are you? Oh, we're going to buy 10 more because we're right. there's money. nothing for Probably them not. to spend the money. I mean, if they're sending 66,000 in fiscal year 23 to 3. And then if we, if we did decide to, this would be a good example of a place to it's a squeeze a little item. bit, we should probably be consistent looking at all the other budgets. We want to make that kind of statement. That, I, I, I think that's a very good point that if we do it for this budget, we must do it for all of the budgets. Um, look for opportunities to squeeze a little bit. Yeah, and then we have to, then we go back to Dean's point of, is that what we want to do? Is that um, knowing that the money goes, how much squeeze do we want to do? How much uh, right. that? And that's something that we, Right. And, and I think in each instance, we'd have to say, is this money that could be spent on buying more pencils that year to, you know, fill the cabinet, or is this money that is specifically for this thing and you really couldn't add it, and you couldn't add extra at the end of the year, it's got maybe one, one, one purchase, for example. We could maybe do that with our own budget because we generally don't spend as much as we might. Grant? Thank you. Grant, Carolyn? Just a quick one. I just wanted to. So this is the type of thing I've uh, observed over the years, uh, and Michael, this is sort of, you probably have the same as town meeting. You spend a lot of time scrutiny, scrutinizing the smaller budgets, and the larger budget just get passed like that. So I don't know, I kind of like, maybe we can encourage some of the scrutiny at some of the larger size budgets. The same things happen, as you said. So I'm just astounded by that. So I, kinda, I like Alan's point. I wonder where the bar is between when we start. Um, you know, I think Charlie might have made a good point about the cap might be a little too high or something like that, or maybe it shouldn't be so overall spread, because at some point we hit that, you know, that <clears throat> red number, however large or small it might be. Um, I mean, how much is that? That the free cash? How much does that factor into it? So that's just the. I like the points that Alan, that Alan and Charlie made about maybe the cap's too high and that maybe we should apply the scrutiny to some of the larger budgets. Carolyn. But it, and yeah, I mean, part of the reason I like doing this now and early is because it, it sets the bar for how we're looking at budgets going forward. Um, but you're right, we do, he's correct. We do squibble over $8,000 versus $800,000. Um, do you? Uh, you know, consistently. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, yeah. If, if they're not, but they don't, they don't have anything else to spend it on. So it's not like they're going to go yeah. spend it on something else. All right, Charlie and then Annie. I believe that uh, the question was asked: Can they spend it on this money on something else? I believe under the bylaw, the town 
uh, the partner managers can spend expenses from one budget and another budget. The, the, the town comptroller has instituted a new uh, charter of accounts to make the spending clearer, but I don't believe that uh, there's a regulation that says you can not move money from one category to another without you know requiring any approval other than the local department manager. Mm -hmm. So, in, I, I guess that my suggestion here would be, in, as much as I took a hard line on this position that it irritates me that the select board chair will never fill, um, it, it's possible for these conversations to be friendly conversations. It would be possible to, if not this year, because you've already met with them, next year when you meet with them, say, hey, we see a pattern where you don't actually spend seventy-eight thousand dollars. Could we cut that to seventy, and you won't have a problem? You want to recategorize? Are you really sure you need this money? And then if they say no, 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 we don't want to give it up. Oh well, but you can at least ask them. Yes, this figure yeah. is not calculated from the selectman's office. They they just they just gotta accept this. Right, it comes from the controller. So if we're having a conversation, it's the controller that we should then have. Whoever's talking to the controller should talk to the controller. Then whoever's talking to the controller should talk to the controller about But it. we're not talking to the No, controller. that's what I'm saying. And neither is the, the, the workers in the select. I don't know right. about this. I can't talk to the select but board it's, itself. I, I but can't somebody on it. our committee is talking to the yeah. controller and right. that conversation right. and say, hey, right. could we make this a more realistic number given that it's not getting spent there? Right. Assuming we don't want that money to roll to free cash and so on and so forth. And I think that there are, that that's probably a good approach in other places where you see something in the budget that is the pattern of underspending a budget where you could say to somebody, hey, could we make this number more realistic and see what they say. I don't believe you could move money from this line to the select board expenses because I don't think those don't are think, the same. Category. I don't think so either. So, so, but it's, oh. yeah, so, um, so what we have is the select board's budget. I we, we actually have two, two different figures. We, we have one for the select boards and we have one for the uh, audit reports. Right. Uh, so so I'm going to make a motion that we accept it. 266520 um, on the select board budget. Second. Second. Um, and Sophie, you agree with that? I do. All right. So we have for us a motion to approve this budget as proposed by the town manager. We've also had a discussion of, of cutting that budget. And we've also had a discussion of not cutting that budget, but uh, next year, Made threatening next year to do it and 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 the more notes. I think that covers how we have talked about both this and the audit before. Is there any motion um, with uh, as to these other two options? All right. So we have a motion that's been seconded. Any further discussion on that? All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? All right, unanimous. Now, um, well, let's do the same with the audit report. I move that we accept the uh, figure of $78,000 for the uh, counting and auditing total audit reports. So Second. Fine. Um, any, is it seconded? Second. Um, any further discussion? Any other motions? All, right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that's unanimous as well. All right. So, so if we've had a discussion. We can't pretend we can't just forget about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, it it is. So it is what it is for this year. Um, how do people want to handle the same issue with these, with these two budgets next year? Are we 
are, are, do we want to make it clear that um, that we would be expecting different numbers next year? Um, do we want to have a session first? How would people like to handle this? Charlie? So um, I think uh, I have to retract partially the statement I made a minute ago. Um, the uh, this auditing and accounting budget couldn't be spent somewhere else. It's, it's actually not part of the selectman's budget. If I was referring to within an expense budget, for example, those uh, four categories above, you could move back and forth, but you couldn't go from one department to the other. Uh, the uh, the other point, uh, the main point that I would make is that um, uh, as we have already had our meeting with uh, Eda Cody, the controller, but this was not on her budget sheet, right. and we didn't discuss it. Uh, but uh, but we'll go back and talk to her and find out what her opinion is. And you know, it's it's not clear to me while while it's in her budget, it's not clear to me that the I don't know who actually makes a decision that says we're going to use these orders or you know or we're going to go out and do a, a, a get a competition going between three potential orders and see who comes back with the lowest bid. <coughs> I mean, that's that's often done, and uh, we've been using Powers and Sullivan for as long as I can remember. Uh, so, you know, there are ways to get the number down. All right, um, Dave. On the um, issue with the, with the the vacancy position in, in the board of selectmen, I hate to do this to you, Madam Chairperson, but I think you should have a conversation with either the current chair. Of the new chair in April as to what he or she wants to do with this position. I can do that. Can I make a friendly suggestion? Um, Annie and Adele. So I would suggest that when we talk to them, that if what they're really looking for is the ability to hire contractor temporary labor, that they not put this in a salary line, but that they add to their expense line some amount of cash to use for that purpose. Because then this at five at point five four, I could be wrong, but I think at point five four, we then also have to budget some benefits. Right. And that would get us out of budgeting the benefits, even if we were budgeting even a slightly higher figure for contract labor because we had to pay more by the hours. And then that feels to me like an appropriate way to gain the flexibility that they want, as opposed to what feels like not quite the right methodology for doing that. Uh, and then we promise not to yell about why are you hiring consultants. Yeah. So as a, as a general principle, is anything wrong with just letting the unspent money fall into free cash? Because it gets it gets included in the capital plan, so it does get reprogrammed. Right. I would argue probably more productively than if some department has some arbitrary time limit that they have to spend it. And I'm absolutely concur with with Dean having seen it for you know I've been in the public sector my entire career. And that the user lose is one of the stupidest um, um, victims that we get because Dean is absolutely right. Uh, um, under the pressure of having to spend money or lose it in their budget the next year, um, some terrible decisions get made. They're short sighted and you know ultimately wasteful, not deliberately, but net effective. So to me, letting the unspent money flow into free cash that can then get reprogrammed to the capital plan, I think is actually a pretty good system. Okay. Just a, a couple of follow ups, a couple of examples of where uh, use it or lose it. In the clerk's office and also in the register's office a few years ago, they lost positions exactly because they didn't carry them. And the register's office now was down to one person. It used to be two and a half. The clerk's office is down a half a position um, that they never got back. So, so the, those are examples of what happens if you say, I don't need it anymore, or uh, they're gonna take it away from you. Go, uh, going back to the uh, Board of Selectmen, just, just a point of information. This, uh, if you will, this part-timer that they hired 
um, to fill in was actually a, a retiree that used to do the, the town day lineup and they brought her back for this a recent town day into all, all, all the paperwork and all the set, set up that, that requires. That's a that's quite a job to begin with. Um, they they brought her back and she was willing to come back, but that's the person uh, that that filled that position. I don't know if that's going to happen this coming uh, year for, for town day. I don't know. Alan and then Dean. I, I guess I, I have to, again question the problem with use it or lose it. I think use it or lose it is a bad thing for office supplies or ammunition or something where, where you can just you know, buy now and do it later. But when it comes to a position or what we pay the auditor, I just don't think that that problem applies to those cases. So in other words, if we see something where it looks like money's been budgeted that never gets spent, I think we have to look at specifically what, what sort of money that is. You know, is it for one big purchase that happens every year and, we, and, it, and it always comes in under budget or is it for office supplies they can just oh we gotta buy some more of that so we each line item can be treated individually yeah. not individually do you ask for a suggestion but before I offer one can we suspend the Altosti rule so I don't assign myself work <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so speaking of the audit um every year the audit has a reconciliation of budget to actual it's actually a printed statement and so what you can do i have it open on my computer right now is you can actually look and see every department that underspent their budget right so we're talking about the select board right now not for fiscal 23 but for fiscal 22 they underspent their budget by 73 74 000. so you can actually see that position the six and the audit just translate right into here so if we wanted to get a better understanding of uh, uh, budget understanding in the various departments, we, we have a roadmap, like we have a document that says this is where the money's exactly underspent. Um, and we could just kind of go through it. And we, it wouldn't take that long to figure out comprehensively how it worked. And then you'd find yourself, at least you'd have an outcome where in, in understanding it, you have treated everybody equally, right? You haven't created an environment where if we were good enough to remember to ask someone about it, we got it. If we weren't good enough to find it, we didn't get it. And, you know, lo and behold, this isn't going to be very surprising to anybody. But um, police was the biggest turn back in fiscal 22, as an example. They turned back 465,000. That was the biggest single turn back. Uh, Treasury turned back 210 that year, et cetera, et cetera. And so that just kind of totaled it up. So I would say, rather than like kind of hunting after each department, and making them kind of deal with that we could just administratively look at this schedule and then just kind of ask you know you look at over you could line them up over four years and see if the same departments are turning back large sums every year and then you would know it's a um reoccurring issue and yes i will do it next week <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we also need to keep another thing in mind uh, it's this thing called, called covid Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so there were across the board, and every every industry, and every industry, every job, every office, every organization, people we could not find people in positions. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I, the police, there, it's not like they'll take anyone off the street. So I would expect, and kind of, and glad. Mm -hmm. that there are some turn back for the police department and fire department because we just don't, we just can't, we don't want to just hire anyone to these positions. So a lot of these positions, it's been a lot of turnover in the last few years. So I think we have to keep that in mind while mm -hmm. we're looking at the, these budgets today that um, oh, things have happened in the last few years. So um, I think it's good for us to to think about these things and, and the tension between use it, lose it being a bad idea, but also being honest with the taxpayer that no, it's really not going to be that big a, an override in 2027 um, because well, you'll just be able to find money. Right. Um, and, and I don't know where the sweet spot is, um, but having having data, and thank you, Dean. Will be helpful in keeping this in mind. 
and I, as we go through the other budgets, I think we should keep this all in mind as well. Josh? Um, I have a question, I guess, uh, in other organizations I've been in, I don't know if municipal finance allows it, is it possible to have like a, a top of the house vacancy number that says that, you know, we're, we're setting aside a million, two million, whatever vacancies across the organization. So there's no pressure for anybody to hire, to spend it just because they can't have it, but the time address and discretion. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know that that has been an issue in the past. Departments yeah. like saying, look how much money I saved. No, us. no, but I guess <laughs> like in this particular budget, mm -hmm. if they're 20% under what they budgeted, then as a taxpayer, I say, oh, geez, the whole town budget there is 20% 20, 20 padded. Right. So what, what's, you know, right. what are they doing there? Right. That just seems funny to me. So I, I think that I would be comfortable with a percentage but twenty percent seems very excessive to me. So it, I was asking my original question: just if you don't want to have use it or lose it or any pressure like that, if there's some expectation if you get a jam, we're going to be able to help you out because we have this funny. Or in general, again, organizations a lot of times will say, you know, we know that people want to hold on to the positions, but really we're never going to fill them all, even without COVID. And so we've got this number here. We've got a 5% vacancy factor for our salary a year, that kind of thing. Be interesting to see if other towns do something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know you. And, and we'd have to, so for example, the police turn back, I can almost guarantee is because of vacancies that they can't yeah. fill, right. not for lack of trying. Yeah. So we'd have to look at each of those and sort of not paint with a broad brush that, and, oh, this is department's pattern. And if the and if the police chief finds him or herself with the ability to fill those positions, we need to make sure that they have the money to do that. But that would like, for that, I'm sorry, but like an overtime adjustment would perhaps correct that issue. I, I don't know. Right? I mean, they're probably spending more in overtime because they've got all these vacancies. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So, yeah. But again, they can't just get people off the street. There's the whole civil. No, I, I'm just saying if they if they're if, if they got all these vacancies and suddenly they actually hire those people, their overtime costs are going to go down and their salaries are going to go up and it might kind of balance each other. Theoretically, yeah. Ellen, Annie, and Dave. Yeah, I want to make a comment too about Dave's remark about uh, reductions in staff in the clerk's office and the registrar's office and maybe some other offices. For years, we've been uh, looking for um, benefits of investing in technology and software and things like that. For example, when I principal clerk typist, how many offices have typists now? And that's sort of a profession that's gone the way of a buggy whip. And, and I'm hoping that as we're investing in Office 365 and other you know, databases, of, like the clerk's office isn't using file cards anymore. I think they're finally using computers. And sort of expect the benefit of that to be a reduction in staff. Over time, so I'd, I'd just like to consider that in positions where investments in capital equipment and software may reduce staff requirements without any loss. Actually, it increases staff. Mm -hmm. It does because the workload the workload changes, and then it, it also increases staff, and it increases the salary of that staff. So, should we go back to file cards? No, I'm just, I'm just I'm just telling you what's happening. It's fact. It, it, it increases. Um, and some of the things, let me just give you an example. Printing. Now, you would think in today's world that we wouldn't have to go to the advocate that really doesn't exist, but we have to print certain zoning and certain bylaws and all that. That's not governed by us. That's governed by state law. So even though we have a Quasi newspaper, we still have to print because the law says we have to. So yeah. we have no control over that. Well, I, I and, and that, that, that to me, wouldn't it be a lot, right. heck of a lot simpler if you could just go on the computer and say, here's this stuff? But the law says, no, it's going to be printed in the paper. I understood. And there's a whole, you know, I'm an IT guy, there's a whole line right. factor. But, but when I see typist in someone's title, I say, who uses typist? <laughs> but, they, but that's those just, those that's, a, that's just, a, 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 okay. I, just wanted, I just wanted to consider that across the board. So, um, Annie, so 
So I think there's a, a couple things going on here. Um, so first of all, I don't think that we can make a hard and fast rule about any of this. Right. I think it's about getting to know your department heads, mm -hmm. how they think, what their goals are, so on and so forth. I'm, I'm, I would put pressure on this particular position in the select board's office. I know how that office runs, and I know they don't need the position. And I know exactly what they do need, which is they do need the contractor. We would never put pressure on the police department about four or five vacancies because of that cycle of how they feel. And also because we know we underpay our police officers and they move to other towns to make more money and so on and so forth. So you're expecting a constant vacancy there. So I think it becomes about understanding your, your department head's budget and seeing what you can persuade your department head to consider if you think there are ways they could be more efficient in terms of their budget request. Because what happens with budgets is that I take this year's numbers, we add 3% to them, we roll them forward because we know that those are the rules. Okay. So if if you didn't think of it as use it or lose it, but you thought of it as zero basis start every year fresh and build it back up with what do I really need, which is a very tedious and difficult process, okay? Then you would begin to see some of this fall out. And the objective there wouldn't necessarily be to get underneath the cap that we're already at. It would be that there may be other things, modern services we want to provide that we don't because there's seventy-eight thousand dollars into the select board's budget that they're turning back when the clerk needs to add a half-time position. That's the difficulty for me. Not that we are are overspending, but that there are things we don't do because we say we don't have the money when in fact that money is turning back to free cash. So, and then this unrealistic picture for the public of what's coming in five years, which is never what we predicted. And you can watch it drop year after year. Um, not that you're ever going to get year five correct. So all I'm saying is, think about this when you're talking to your department heads. I certainly think about it when I'm talking to mine. And those are the kind of questions that we ask. What What are you What are you not doing that you need to do? Okay. And how did you get that change in your total salary budget this year? You know, just how's it working? So. Dave, Sophie, do you want to add anything? Um, nothing, but Charlie did have some. Sophie, do you have any other? No, I think um, this has come up one because it's recent in the past three years since and, and since I joined. And also just because I think I was curious, right? It comes from curiosity of saying how much is going to street crap <laughs> <laughs> and who is depending on this money? Because if they do fill it and that disappears from free cash, is that a shock to those who are planning something with that free cash. So it's just leave it open. I think the select board is also difficult for us because we don't meet with the, the chair of the select board, we right? Meet with the board administrator who really isn't the one making the decisions because nobody takes our calls. Is that something that. we have? <laughs> Charlie? Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, following Alan's comment about Efficiencies, you know, typists versus computer operators, etc. Uh, I, I have, I was on the capital planning committee for a long time, and I always heard narratives from our managers that they needed this better fire truck or this better public works vehicle or these better computers because it was more efficient. And um, and many times um, the implication was that the personnel, of course, would. Personnel level would not be quite as high. Um, in fact, what has always happened is that the amount of services delivered to the community increased and used that money. And so if, if there's going to be any savings from improved technology, whether it's in vehicles or office equipment or other tools, uh, that direction has to come from the top the town manager and the board of selectmen or the school committee or the superintendent that says that this is the level of services we're going to provide at this cost or at a lower cost or whatever. But it, I don't think it's a decision that a department manager can make. 
anything else on this slide. So Dean's going to get us some information. I think we all should be thinking about these these things as we are looking at our budgets. Um, and if you point things out to us, ask your department head these questions. Um, and maybe this will be a very fruitful exercise at the end of the budget season for setting up a game plan for next year. Um, Alec Jones, did you have anything? No, Daryl. I, I would just ask, you know, I believe for most of our budget meeting, we are meeting with the actual department head. So I'd ask why, why in this case are we not? Because the, it's, we're talking about the Board of Selectmen's office. And it, it, it's a different setup. Um, we're talking to the Board Administrator. But it sounds like the Board Administrator doesn't have the decision making authority. Do we pray for power or pray for serenity? It's limited. Um, it, because they are elected officials. It's a different setup when you're dealing with elected officials rather than appointed officials. And we have never met all that. I've been on this, this committee for, I'm glad I could get how many years. Um, and we've never met. No, I understand we have. I'm asking why can't we going forward? Well, I, I, I've been asking that, that question myself. I, to be honest with you, um, I know of. I don't even know if the board of selectmen are aware about this discussion about vacancy or not. It's brought to their attention, but like Sophie said, it's passed on to the next year, to the next year, to the next year. To the next year. That's an issue in and of itself. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's why it's different. But the, it, it's different when you're dealing with elected officials versus appointed officials. We, I will tell you that. My first experience, I think the first year on the board, we raised some questions um, on the salaries and we couldn't get a call back from the chair. Right. Uh, that's that's true. Yeah. We'd like just, to speak to the chair this year. Let me know. You know we know where they live. <laughs> <laughs> and we know where they sleep. It, it may be also, maybe things can change now with Marie no longer in here, unfortunately. But you know, maybe she had a certain power over the office that. <laughs> so so it's the change of guard. Right, so and maybe you could change the part and, and you get back in. And tell us how much the chair got involved in the budget. Um, so I think it varied by chair, right? I didn't try to get involved in this budget. I think I had a 10 minute conversation with Marie and said, Do we really need all these people? And she said, Get out of my office. <laughs> and she was great. So I, didn't, I got out of her office. <laughs> Um, I do know that Kevin was very, very specific about wanting to preserve certain things in the budget and so on and so forth. So he may have had more of a line already, but I don't think that that's a reason not to try to have a conversation with the chair of the select order to ask them to be at your meeting. That just may be a reason that they defend the budget. You know, if you had asked, when I was chairing, if you had said to me, we need you in this budget meeting, I would have showed up. If you had then said to me, we need to do 10 things, and Marie said, no, we don't, I probably would have gone, okay, Marie, but I would have shut up. So I think you should at least be able to get your calls returned. And if you have trouble getting your calls returned, let me know. I can tell you I've worked for water and sewer too many. Um, I don't know who those people are. <laughs> I can tell you it's Mike Rodemacher. <laughs> I uh, a number of years ago, I, I made phone calls to the then call the chairman <laughs> of the board of selectmen trying to get a hold of that chairman, yeah. and it never happened. I yeah. even left, I even tried to have the office staff in the selectmen's office get a hold of that chairman. And although they, they spoke to the chairman and they said, David McKenna's looking for you, and here's his number, that didn't happen. Please tell me I wasn't the chair. It's no, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Just chat. Yeah. I, I just I just want to remind people that it is a bylaw yeah. that every office in town must give us the information that we request. Mm -hmm. Now I hate to to go nuclear, but if we get frustrated, I feel like it is within our power to say, "Fine, we're going to just give our report to town meeting 
without your office being funded at all until town meeting why? And then we'll see when we're town meeting feels about it. And you can file your own motion to substitute your budget then and we can fight about it. If you want to go through the humiliation <laughs> of us saying that you have given, you have treated us this way in our town meeting, but I don't think we ever have to get to that point in this. So, um, so if people are having problems with their department head, um, let's bring it to the full committee and, and talk about it going forward. Um, because because we, we have the we it is our right under the bylaw of the town bylaw that if we ask for it they must give it to us if, if, uh, so so we can add anything I, I was just gonna say I think we're probably comfortable with the fact that when we if you, you will be approaching them about this particular issue going forward I think at that point maybe they'll understand that one more communication next year. And um, the incoming uh, chair of the select board is someone who understands how the finance committee works, having served on finance. So, um, excuse me, but did, I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. The incoming chair mm -hmm. of the select board is someone who understands how the finance committee works because oh, okay. he has spent time here. Yeah. Lots of time. All right. Do you have any more budgets? Uh, we we have we could do all of ours, or we can. I know libraries or some other ones. We're ready to go. No, so if, if I could, excuse me. Can we get the zoning one done? Yeah, that, that's a small one. Then we can. Let's do do whatever. I, I say small. But I I <laughs> hope it's. They're small sometimes. You know, yeah, I know. That's, <laughs> that's on page seventy eight in the book. Seventy eight, seventy nine. I had a, a telephone conversation with the uh, building inspector with the zoning in Kiev. It comes under the, the building inspector duties uh, and responsibility. Well, as, as if you remember, I guess the position um, zoning administrator it used to be a part time position and it was shared with the building inspector and it became kind of a Nightmares thing. So, uh, personally, it's now a 0.89 position, which is considered full time. <laughs> and the duty and responsibilities have been taken over by, by the, the, this person now who worked in another location. That's why you see in, in the salary I, the longevity of, of four, 443, is because this person has worked in, in other areas. Mm -hmm. Within the building department, twenty nine percent. Yeah, there you go. So, um, so that's that, that's what the figure is. And in uh, in the zoning, it's, it's they've been very busy the last few years with, with the hearings. Uh, if, if somebody re requests information on, on past hearings, the printing, office supplies, whatnot. But now, uh, uh, within the, uh, current year and last year, it's it, it's leveled off as far as the office support is now stable, where it wasn't stable before. It was, they were in and out. They brought mm -hmm. back a retiree. Uh, so, but the, the zoning has it, it's their workload has dramatically increased. It now requires a 0.89 position. So, so that's basically it. So, the zoning board total is 76,723, and they only have that one employee. Mm -hmm. Are you making a motion? I'll make, I'll make that motion that we accept that figure. 76, 72. Second. Second, second. Question down. Um, was there any discussion of the impact of the NBTA Communities Act? It seems like there might be. A, I'm almost surprised there isn't more in here because that could result in a flurry of zoning activity. Uh, no, there was not discussion, but um, a lot of these, they're expecting in different departments for different reasons, a lot of. Yeah. Influx of different things coming down within the next six to eight months, which I was surprised at. I think usually with this, because uh, this is who works with the chair of the 
Board of Appeals, so in Board of Appeals, and it's not until the work comes in and that they have hearings and they have that work. Do they can they anticipate the, the number? They, they're not gonna. I don't think up it ahead of time. Sort and of also, they get, they get information requests. They have to provide it. They have to do research, and, uh, yeah. and it, it get better. There was a lot of uh, requests that a while ago for a lot of research. Charlie? Well, I have a question as to why um, in 2023 the actual office budget was almost $5,500 and they went back to budgeting $800. What, what line is that? Uh, office supplies. At that $5,478 going back. Um, that was part. Of, that's what I thought I'd be diplomatic. And there was a lot of research going on. That, that, that they, they had to take people just to do a research. Somebody had requested all this information. Okay. I'm familiar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's put that figure up. Public information reports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can think of the any other questions, comments? All right. Um, we have a motion and seconded. Um, all in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Please unanimously. What other budgets do you have? So can you there. Town clerk, town managers, legal, legal planning. Let's just wow. go. Want to keep going? I don't know if anybody else wanted to go tonight. Whether... No, to do. Well, I, I don't know if people's schedules. And... Rebecca and well, Annie, are you able to do it? Any time. All right, let's just have a full keep going. <laughs> keep going. All right. What do you want to do next? Well, to the clerk, so that gets three budget. Okay, town clerk then. <laughs> town clerk, 59. 59. Actually, fifty five. Yeah, sixty. Sixty one. Actually, this this year wasn't a uh, was fairly quick meeting. There there weren't too many changes from last year. Um, the the salaries is just regular increase in salaries, nothing specific. Uh, same with overtime. I think last year that included some temporary workers during during the elections. Uh, the big change in longevity is simply because uh, a long time employee retired. Um, so that big chunk comes up from that one person. Um, stipends, as we say every year, it's just a union contract for clothing. Um, and that takes us down through the salaries. I don't think there was anything specific. Uh, and then expenses. You have advertising, which um, the actuals seem to be tracking fairly well. Uh, they've reduced the language. They were able to reduce language and legal notices to keep the numbers lower, which is why the 2022 actuals are so much higher. That was before they started reducing the language um, with the approval of town council. The 5203 is the data processing expenses. It's just the repairs on the machines. Uh, 5219 stenographers. Uh, this went before town meeting, but town meeting wants to keep transcripts. And so until we find a way to make transcripts from the ACMI recordings, we have to keep the stock reverse. So there's just no way to reduce that. Um, office supplies um, is including a security paper for vital records. So that, that keeps that cost higher. Binding uh, is a way that they use to do vital records and that's no longer done this way. It's under fire library, it's moved elsewhere. 5228 printing licenses. This is dog tags. 
Um, they tried reducing the number of dog tags. That didn't go well, so they're, they're sticking to ordering more this year. Uh, order lots of dogs. <laughs> Fifty-two ninety-nine um, is otherwise unclassified member dues, uh, copy machines, uh, additional training. They've been doing extra training, and that is going well. So this is one where the technology is definitely, um, what we're told is increased technology also means increased salaries because you have to have people who can use the technology and, uh, and the cost of the technology as well. Uh, any other notes? They are, I think that was all of them, on, right? the on the town clerks. They, they now have um, a full complement Employees, everything is now working well. Working well, it's flowing a lot better, and uh, so so that's that's a good thing. We can move to approve the proposed budget of three hundred four thousand dollars, three hundred four eighty six. Do a second. Second. All right. Questions. Um, second. I'll second. Charlie to a certain minute. Did you call me? Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so look at the salaries here in the. There's a typo. The step increases are $6,300. And the individual positions of the assistant town clerk, the principal clerk, and the principal, the two principal clerks, um, they also went down. In, uh, there's turnover. If you look at the previous, those are all new uh, hires. Yeah. So there's some changes there because of the new hires. There were all new hires. There is a typo on the detail for the town clerk herself. The max number for fiscal year 2025 is lower than her uh, her pay. That's just a consistent typo that's been there for a while that we need to get fixed. Well, is the, is that that's where it's sort of headed? Um, <clears throat> As an elected official, hers is set, I think. She's not elected. She, yes, she is. She is still elected. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then it's set by zone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that it, Charlie? That's it. Thank you. October. On a side note, I asked the town clerk about uh, if we all recall that there was a vote for rank, rank choice voting. Mm -hmm. And it's still tied up with the Secretary of State through the legislature. Yep. And it, I could be wrong. It appears that as long as the current Secretary of State he frowns on yeah. um, ranked choice voting, we're not the only community waiting for, for a decision. There's a number of them now that are waiting. But I did bring that up because it's been a while since that, that, that vote was taken. So just wanted to bring the attention to the community. Topher? Yeah, I noticed the assistant town clerk this year's a grade five. Yeah. I know it's a different person, but last year was a three. I'm sorry, I, I, I just can't hear you. Last, last, year, um, last year, the assistant town clerk was a three, grade three instead of a grade five. It's because of that's the one who retired, who's yeah. been here a very long time, and didn't have the knowledge of tech, technology and required so i think the new person has who, a higher who work in in, in the office yeah. then becomes right was appointed by the clerk to be the assistant top clerk and then that, that's what and done. right so and that person had been there previously at it at a three right okay oh, that's wonderful mm -hmm. um Annie. so um Back to the assistant town clerk, the new pay in FY 2024 that's listed here was $73,000. Was that the previous incumbent salary or was that the current employee's previous salary when she was a principal clerk at Texas? Do we know? Um, we can look at last, I had last year's one great year. Oh my God. <laughs> the beauty of having paper. I'm going to make you think I should go back to paper. I, I, I think that number uh, is, is the last year's incumbent 
of uh -huh. with the changes made at town meeting when we voted in three, right. that's what's yes. in the town. Right. right. So she, um she was the the former assistant town clerk in last year's budget book was at sixty two thousand and change before the changes at town meeting, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then um right, because the when she when the current assistant town clerk was a principal clerk, she's much lower. Right. Right. She's they were all grade three. Mm -hmm. So there seems to right, they were all grade three last year. I think that's Tober's point. And then now they're grades fives and fours. Uh, but as that office right. is ramped up, we can okay. increase technology. I so that that explains the increase in salaries. Yeah. Check and be sure that we weren't looking up along the pay there. Sometimes when a long time person leaves and then the person comes in, you got to reset. Okay, right. you got to reset. But okay. the question. Josh. Thank you. Um, I have a question. I think you probably should answer, but I'm just looking at the salary and wages of an increase of 19, almost 20,000. But it, it seems like with the, on the FY 2024, um, it's like a 10 or $11,000 difference of that 273 versus uh, 261. So that just like, you know, which, I'm, looking I'm, at, sorry, which one? I'm looking at like the top of the, uh, the 2024 budget says 261,420 right. for salary, and then down at the bottom of the next page for salaries, it has 273 at the right. very bottom of FY24. So I'm, I'm just trying to look at that 19,932, which is the dollar change on salaries. Mm -hmm. And that seems like that's the difference between 261 and 281, whereas the 281 is the same as the sum at the bottom of the column in 2025. But the 273 is not right because the budget in 2024 that was approved is different after town meeting, right? Okay, so okay. Um, and then my other question is I just look at the capital budget also. Is there anything, any movement in the, in the clerk's office to digitize or that sort of thing? I don't see yes. that here. Yeah, there is okay. The yes. it, it, that's going to be a slow process, but to answer your question directly, it, there's plenty of movement going on. Going to be a slow process, but there's no dollars here or in the capital budget yet. No, not yet. Okay, they did make, I don't remember exactly what request they made, but they did make right. couple, the cap capital, capital requests, but we couldn't include it in the plan, right? So they also made a request to the CPA, so right, and make it from CPA. They retired the select yeah. request, yeah. yeah. There's still more typewriters. <laughs> All right, any more questions? All right, we have a motion for three hundred four thousand eighty-six. It's been seconded. Um, all in favor, say yes. 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 Any opposed? All right, unanimous. On to the next one. Order registrars. Next page. Okay. So elections and salaries. Um, as we discuss every year, this is based on the number of elections that happens in that fiscal year. So there will always be fluctuations. So this is a year. Um, so Julie was reminding us 2024 budget was for two elections, an override um, and a town election. 2025 budget, there's an election in September, November, and April, so we're at three. The 2024 budget, though, was actually just for one election, even though we had two, because I think she said she hadn't budgeted for the override, which is somewhat of a surprise work. Um, and I think Tara reported an email uh, earlier tonight before the meeting that, so Julie's expecting the 2024 number to be too low, actually, uh, in her numbers, which is a separate issue than the goal of this budget. So, mm -hmm. um, so she will need a transfer as an aside regarding 2024, most likely. At some point. When At some point. Finished. So uh, over time, also, uh, the 5103 line is having to do with, um, what we say, in the past the elections as well. But she's not counting for this year. Um, 
the expenses being at uh, 5221, the electric, uh, electronic voting equipment has to be the 21 machines. Uh, Those 21 machines, we're talking about the voting pad. Yep. And there's one that 5221. So there is an increase from last year. That's the increased cost <laughs> plus the town clicker, town meeting clickers are including, included in that number. So that's a contract. And every year under the contract, there's an increase for those clickers. So that's why that number will increase every year under that line. Um, office supplies uh, stays fairly consistent. Printing ballots. Um, let's see, that's coding. There's a, an increase. So that's also for the increase in the number of elections, I believe, the fact that there's more um, ballots. What was interesting in the printing of ballots that she's, Julie said is the town of Arlington has about 50% of mail-in ballots, I think, um, in early voting, but she still needs to print enough ballots for voting in person for every- Every registered Every voter. registered voter. <laughs> because she, not quite, I mean, she undercounts a little bit, she cannot find herself in a position of running out of ballots. Right, right. And so she throws away a lot of ballots um, after the election, but she that, that's just a cost and a waste that has to be built in to the system. Um, and the other purchase services, line 5236, that is a significant increase, and that has to do with the coding in the machines. Uh, which is goes into the when you code the ballots. So the more the more ballots and elections we have, the more the coding costs go up because you have to code those ballots. Um, so that is um, this year. That's fifteen thousand for the coding versus last year seven thousand for the coding. That ties into um, to those numbers. Um, and also, on the, the, yeah. The, Again, we're going to have early voting for the presidential primary and also for the, for the November election. And the presidential primary, at this point, will have um, early voting a week. Before, a week. Presidential election will be two weeks early voting. So that, um, that's coming from the Secretary of State. So, well, I, I, don't, I don't think she's going to use like, as many personnel, as much personnel as she had to use in the past. Right. But that number will, will, will be finally it's unknown. It's an un, unknown. To follow, to go back to what I had just said about the 15,000 versus 7,000 for coding, you'll notice that's actually more than a $4,000 increase, which is only showing a $4,000 increase. And that is because last year, the number included 3,000 for visually accessibility. Mm -hmm. That 3,000 is now being covered by the state, which was the hope. Um, so that's where we, that's why we're only going up four instead of going up four because we, we had 3,000 in there that uh, was used to be used for something else. So are you going to make a motion? Yes, we can now make a motion um, to approve the um, election budget of 278,704. Election. Okay, all right. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Uh, Michael and then Al Johnson. So, where did the uh, 5219 cost items for the day of election workers? Um, 5219, trying to look at the history of that. It hasn't been in here. Um, poll worker salaries, I think she now puts it into salaries and, and, salaries and wages. Yeah, that's my question. Where's the breakdown of salaries? I, I don't and think she, I don't think we've ever had a breakdown of salary and wages because it is just for the poll workers. There is no employee. Um, there, is, there is no employee in elections. There um, is a term that they use for the employees that work the, work the election. Just can't come. I should know what I work the election. But they so, get paid. Right, they, they get paid. Well, they, they, right, they get paid. They get some do, some, some salaries. Some choose not to get paid. Some do it on the I just found that out 
last year. Some choose to volunteer their time while others be paid. Some of this is also um, historically things when Julie came in, she just things were put into line items where they didn't really belong and she cleaned house and re put things in the right categories. Um, which is a historical point. So I think there used to be line items here, but it didn't make, you know, she moved it up to where it was supposed to be. Salaries. But so, um, so we don't have an answer as to where that, where those, where that cost is. There, right, yeah. it, it's, the cost is in the salaries and wages. That's the, the time for the poll workers. Um, she said before it's a per election cost. It's different every fiscal year based on the number of elections. Um, those are the election workers. This also, since we have new members and, and a reminder for those that were new last year, um, there is a reimbursement system by the state. So this is the cost. This is the true cost of the elections that we budget. But then there's a reimbursement that goes into the general fund from the state. But we never know what that number is until after the fact. So we conservatively don't budget for any. And that comes out of the state audit. 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 Goes into free cash. <laughs> All right, so we're extra cash for free. <laughs> <laughs> Alec Jones, do you have anything else? Well, no, I'll take it. My question was going to be where's the breakdown of salaries and wages that are in the budget has, but I understand what happened is it got moved from expenses to salaries, and there's no compensatory <coughs> breakdown. Now, a breakdown of salaries and wages would give us some idea of that kind of change right. for a number of hours. And so, so I'm not taking into that because. Right, and it's so, I mean, the, what she told us last year, we didn't ask about it this year, but the last year for my notes is it, it's so dependent on the number of elections, okay. right, that every year this, the breakdown. Well, still, it'd be nice to know, okay, this year it's going to okay. take for 57 workers instead of the yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll think about that. Okay. And then historically, too, now that she has the full pass that the election workers use, yeah. um, there's less overtime because things go faster. So there's the cost, the increased cost of the technology, but then an increase in the over time yeah, to those election. But there's workers. something under that number, though. Uh, <coughs> okay. And then, as an aside, for those dealing with facilities and the other budgets, um, traditionally she's always used the lines room, mm -hmm. I guess, for counting the ballots, doing right. all the ballots, and that's not um, usable. Uh, also for storage of the ballots and all that. So. Uh, situation of the conditions of the town hall are affecting how our town clerk works. The uh, lion's room off limits. So what was the plan? Just a picture of big yellow tape around it. Um, I think she's planning on using part of the select board's office. <laughs> I don't think they know it yet. They don't know it yet. Huh? Is this room big enough? I don't know that I um, thought about it. They can't be away from the clerk's office because oh. they're, they're gonna be within some okay. type of distance with okay. the clerk keeps on going. This room in the select board's office. How is it gonna be <laughs> big open space? And now now with it's happening in this in the selectman's room now. Yeah, the selectman's um, room. So that's got you look up, up and you say, oh well and it smell. Like the, the smell in the selectman select board, the meeting room from mm -hmm. the water from damages. Water. Yeah. They have Field. fans on constantly trying to. Charlie. So uh, there's an extra election in 2024. Right? I mean, there's an extra there's, election. Compared to 2024, mm -hmm. but in the 2024 number here, there were two, but it, the budget was for one. Okay, so 2025. Why, why is the, why is the, why doesn't the ballots go up more? Yeah. Um, well, because the number of voters don't go up. Well, and, and, and the the ballots for a general election is paid for by the state. The balance for our ballots for our elections we pay for. Um, so, Grant. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you. Um, just curiosity and. And get the better of us sometimes. Yep. Not really super budget related, but it's the only time I could ask this. When you said something about coding balance, yes, um, non budget, but that's a cool process. What's that mean? What's that do? She ex Julie explained to us so you have the ballot that you fill in, right? The bubbles, but each time you have an election, that looks different, and you have to code it for the machine that feeds it. Oh, okay. 
It's code of membership. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so the more trying to make the connection. The more okay. elections, the more ballots, the more yeah, ballots, change, the change. more okay. Oh, I, I got that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, though I had to figure it out. Today. It's not a manual thing. Okay. Any other questions? No, Topher. Yeah, so just make sure I heard this right. Did you say 50% of voting is now mail in and owed? Yes. Yeah. Wow. That, that that is really caught on. So we have a motion for a 278704. I believe the second page. Yep. Yes. Um, any other questions? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Unanimous. Next budget. Uh, next page for the registrars. Um, the change in salary was an increase uh, from a grade four that was in the budget book. And I think at town meeting it was maybe reclassified. It was reclassified. I think it was what you pulled out of it. Yeah, otherwise, it was still the same. She, I mean, she hopes that the part of the printing the census and all that will. Um, I think she had said at some point she was thinking some of those numbers would go down, get new mailings. So last year she told us for printing census, new mailings for not returning the census is something the office had started last year. And so that's a lot of paper, and hopefully, if people catch on that, it's they should turn in their census and they'll have fewer reminders to send yeah. out or new mailings for the fact that they didn't because if they don't send it in they get taken off the voter rolls and, and all that so um they go on excuse me, they go on to the inactive list right. so if you go to vote and someone says to you vote um, you can vote but you're on the inactive list you have to step aside the warden has to take some in, some information it's very quick but and the people say well, why is that well you didn't fill up the census so, uh, great. here's your census work. Yeah. Okay. Right. So basically, that's what you're doing with this form. So it goes back on who you are and where you are. So she had added the reason there was an increase in the actual from 2022 to 2023 there is because she had added an additional mailing um, when you did not return your census so that you wouldn't have those issues with the polls to try and get people to turn them in. With the idea that in a few years, people will realize they should fill it out the first time instead of waiting to get the reminder. But she's not there yet in mm -hmm. being able to reduce that. Uh, and, and most husbands, when they come to vote, are not here. They blame their wives. <laughs> she was helping not, she didn't tell me to do it. One of those. <laughs> it is certainly my fault. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think uh, we moved to approve the budget to the board Second. of registrars 73,733. Second. Grant, do you have a question? No, I was going to make the motion. Okay. Michael. So you, uh, where, where does the printing happen? Is it all uh, contracted service? Yeah. The, like the balance of yeah. yeah, yeah. The balance, yeah. census forms, all these things that go on. Yeah, it's all contracted services. All right, there's a motion and seconded. Any other questions? All right, next page. Yeah, go on. Sure. Page 55. Legal department, page 55. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, as we all know that we we have a new town council, yeah. um, who was the acting town council for a few months during the summer. Um, Doug Hine has left for another position in another community. So presently, there's also a vacancy for the deputy town council. Where it comes to contact the um, 
Yeah, they're in the process of conducting interviews for that position. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, first question I had was about the uh, vacant position, but they're working on it. Um, are they interviewing today or not? What, what he said to me was that it, it's currently being worked on. So, I, I took that as they were interviewing people. And then uh, along the longevity line, again, that's just because of the departure of that time um, related to that. Legal expenses. So this is where uh, there's a lot of stuff that's usually covered in here. The lawyers don't take the time to uh, detail out <laughs> everything that's in here. It's just one big bucket. So historically, um, what's been explained is in the 5244 expenses, you have your bar dues, um, your bar association dues, your legal databases, your court fees, filing fees, um, office supplies, travel, unclassified, such as having court reporters um, or uh, usually at the Zoning Board of Appeals or the police dog hearings, and uh, outside counsel. And outside counsel is where the biggest chunk of the money goes. Um, so we had some updates based on the previous uh, year's budget. There was um, a police case that, that that's where a big chunk of the money was going, and uh, that's been resolved. resolved. So that issue has been resolved. That outside counsel fee is not carried over or budgeted for the next fiscal year. Um, so that was that was about it. Yeah, we we also asked. Excuse me. We also asked. For different things that, that we thought might might come about as far as legal matters. One was um, issues up at the, the uh, public works, and, and there are no issues now. But uh -huh. There was possibility of some type of contamination. They had warned us uh, last year that we should maybe there would maybe be something in the future for the DPW um, would have potential time. exposure, but they haven't had to. And there was an issue with contamination up at Poets Corner when there was a discussion going on between the Archdiocese and Belmont Hill as far as, as, far as the joint venture. Well, that no longer the Belmont Hill would approve their plan. So that's. Those were sort of on our uh, last year when we asked them about heads up and things. Those were things they had told us to watch out for, but actually haven't come to the group. So. And um, we also asked them about the house that their their offices are over there, the Javis house on, on mm -hmm. the street, because we had a discussion last last year about the conditions of, of that piece of property, and um, the, the uh, town council told us that uh, through CPA funding they received a sizable amount of money to a uh, a full grant uh, for work inside the building. The first thing they got, they got the building is not air conditioned, and as a result, over the years, is um, the building swells and it's sinking, and so, so they're going to go after that. Um, there are air quality. The first pile of the money for air conditioning and, and straightening that out, and um, if they more, need more funding, they'll, they'll then go back to the CPA and ask them for more. But um, he was quite pleased with the size of uh, the dollar. He didn't give me the dollar amount, but he said that it was size of the sum. And that's definitely good news this year as opposed to last year when we met with them when there was nothing in the pipeline and everything looked pretty bleak as far as the state of that house, both exterior and interior. So that's good news. The house is not, not actually owned by the town of Allen, mm -hmm. but I guess there's been an agreement in place for since Paul Revere wrote up Mass Ave, I guess mm -hmm. I know that um, <laughs> <laughs> the town of Allington would. would uh, Keep the house, maintain the house, and it is a working agreement. Who owns it? So it's been effective. Um, the owner was it the owner of the property behind it? The original owner of the property was the Wilford Brothers, mm -hmm. who owned uh, 
The Brantwood. Is that the Brantwood behind it? Old Old Colony. Old Colony they owned as well, but they owned yeah. the one on Pleasant Street. Right. And then that they long gone. So yeah. 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 But right. the, so they, last they do current, they own that property. They own the property, but when the town they, there's a, a working agreement between the town and the owners of parts of, a, mm -hmm. of the house that are the town's responsibility um, versus the owner's responsibility. Yes. Yeah, so and then the condo it's, association owns it? Pardon me? The condo association owns it? Uh, no, uh, not the condo association, but the, the majority, the majority owner holder by right. the condo association. Okay. Right. Do I have a motion? Motion to move to, to uh, 504,000. Man, perfect. Then seconded. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any other questions? Charlie and then Grant and then Michael. So, um, thinking about here, uh, is there a, a workman's comp lawyer in this department? That's the vacancy of the child. So, the current town council used to be that, used to do that when he was the, uh, the, Deputy Town Council. He was brought on to take to focus on that. So now that position is empty, if, but he has the ability, obviously, the knowledge to if do you, it. Yeah, if you remember when Ed, Ed Malingo retired as a compensation officer, um, they did a new direct job description for that position, which gave, gave a, a new title of Deputy uh, Town Council slash Workers Comp. So that's that's the position that's taken. So in the in the workman's comp process, and I'm not trying to pretend that I know much about it, but I recall that there was some sort of a fund that existed and it ran between one hundred thousand and two hundred thousand dollars different years. Is that fund still around, or what happens to these? You know the. I think the it's on a different here? budget. It's on a different because um, they normally the past it's few not, years they used to talk to us about it, but it's for somebody else. So it's, not in it's if you look in the to some people yeah. who had workers who could be in the budget. It's in the insurance budget. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was somebody else. It's not us. <laughs> Grant. Yes, thank you. Um, sort of a foreshadowing, because uh, I don't really think the, you know the answer or the even ask the question or that there is a good answer. But so under the offsets here. Um, so the offsets are basically, you know, not to go into the water sewer budget, pretty much this is um, what the water and sewer department paid the legal department. So what did they pay them for? How much did they, how much work did they do on the water and sewer? I'm sure you didn't ask it, and um, I bet they won't answer, but it's a foreshadowing because um, that's 121, and it went up, went up three and a half percent. Yeah. Well, I so conversations with Sandy. I understand conversations with Sandy. Yeah. <laughs> I've, had, I've had conversations with Sandy too, right. and Sandy's no longer here. Right. But I'm wondering if there's room. some some way that you can like probe and say, "Hey, um, how much work did you do for the water and sewer?" I think we should be able to ask that question <coughs> town manager. But he doesn't work for Lee. Huh? But he so, manages them. Well, he's the well, I understand. Well, I, I plan, that's why it's foreshadowing. I do plan on asking him, but um, isn't it? I, Sandy had explained to me that it's just mathematical calculations. Well, <laughs> that's right. Okay. So I, I mean, I can a formulas, and he has he had a baked formula when I, I asked him, I know. and he said last year he said it was in the works to review the formulas and the allocation among the departments. Right. But that we were pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so those those are those mirror the kind of conversations that I've had with Sandy and with many other people and stuff. But it doesn't really address the question. Okay. So so that's basically the rates, and we pay a, a consulting company to do that and all that. But the basis behind that is that these people do work for water and sewer. So I would figure we would ask the legal department what kind of work. I mean, the town manager, they also have an offset and they also do lots of work for water and sewer. It's also triple digits. 
It also goes up 3% every year. And I'm sure they do work for them. I'm just wondering what kind of work they do. I mean, is it contracts or what is it? Okay. Uh, no idea. I mean, I'm, and uh, so that's, that's the only question. I didn't expect. Well, no, I had asked previously and the answer was, it's in a chart somewhere we yeah. follow the chart. <laughs> I know, I know it's a calculation, but it's a calculation based on work, I so, think. Okay. Uh, maybe not, but anyway, it's not so foreshadowing. So. Francis foreshadowing. The town manager will be in on, on Wednesday. And is there any questions chance that, that they could ask them like for how much work they do on it? I mean, we have to ask the town manager to ask the legal department how much work they do on orders. I would like to hear from the town manager how this is calculated because it is a formula mm -hmm. and how old formula that is. formula is right. and <clears throat> whether there is an opportunity now to um, review that formula. Uh, I too have heard from Sandy more than once that it was going to be reviewed or rethought and it never happened. So it's a good time now to revisit that and let's start with what town manager may be able to tell us. On this. That sounds good. I and again, we had talked about doing that, but there's two different things in play here. It's easy just to say, well, it's a calculation, but it's a calculation based on what they do. So, and I understand, you know, I've been through, the study was done over 12 years ago and it didn't explain how they came up with the ratios, but how they come up with the ratios might have something to do with how much time they spent on it. Or maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe they don't really have to do any work, I guess. And that's what we might hear from the town manager. They don't really have to, they're just allowed. Okay. Yeah, well. Michael, I think you had hand up. Yeah, I've never met a lawyer who you know how much money is going out the office door to somebody for work that that lawyer couldn't do himself in person. No, I mean, I think when you drill down the expenses, they can, I, I don't have in my notes from the, from last year, I don't know about the previous year, but they just don't line item all of these expenses, partially because in the budget, they're anticipating where things are going to be and what kinds of um, cases are going to come up where they'll need outside counsel. So at the budgeting process mm -hmm. for the next year, it's just a, a guess that it, whether they're going to need environmental attorneys or labor attorneys. Uh, so when it goes up, it goes down, it's like right. snow plowing, we can't tell. They, I right. mean, they, they, the reason last year, so we knew about the, they had given us a heads up last year about there's a police case, we'll probably have to be budgeting for that. And then it turned out when we checked in with them this year, they said, oh no, it's been resolved. So that's why there's a decrease. Um, so they sort, they try and anticipate, they did not alert us this year to any su substantial increase needed for yep. this budget. But there may be that we won't know until, until, then, until something comes filed. up and then or, an outside council needs maybe. to be engaged. Town gets it seems a question that comes up frequently in town meeting. Mm -hmm. How much is XYZ case costing us? In addition to the salaries and you know legal right. office we're already so it's paying. it's in this number and I'm sure at town meeting they can say such case is costing us such but that's a historical number right that and we're looking at a budget for the future and that we don't know because we haven't been controlled yet we don't know what's going to settle we don't know Charlie it seems to me that um, the, there are subs well, the categories there and they're probably being tracked in units. You, yes, we just suggest, suggest <laughs> they put everything in expenses. This work out. Is there not being tracked in categories? I, my understanding is it almost just under a general category of expenses. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I think you could complain to somebody about that. Yeah. Uh, and okay. the whole scheme of things, we, we're not, we're, it's mostly. Upside count. It's mainly I mean, dues are a couple hundred. Right. Dues are a couple hundred. Um, 
legal databases are sort of a set number, you know, for your Westlaw searches to look up cases, to look up all that kind of stuff. It's just sort of set numbers. Your, your big thing is outside counsel. We can we get them to do two months? We could <laughs> get them to do two more. Outside counsel. You know, in the past, I don't have it in my notes here, but they, they have said which firms they tend to use, and, mm -hmm. you know, named the one or two firms they tend to go back to over. Labor or yeah, certain, or... certain firms have certain expertise and mm -hmm. one is contract negotiations, mm -hmm. one comes to mind. Yeah. They did happen to say, I'm sorry, I know the, the Muger property, as we all know, is the new town. Mm -hmm. There'll probably be another 10 years. Breaking it into different line items, I think, is a conversation you should do, or somebody you should have a need of. Uh, but I don't think it really impacts this budget at all. Any other questions? So, I was just curious about this. I noticed that the uh, new town council has a step, but the old town council did not. I think, right, because he's new to the position, so I think it just covers a partial. Um, you get a step until you reach the max, or you have a step in that, until you reach 50% of the max, and then you don't get a step. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No, Charlie just told All right, so we have a motion that's been seconded for 504,428. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, unanimous. What more do you have for us? Which one? We can do planning. All right, we'll do planning first, but then we have time. When will we finish all the things? That's piece yeah. 71 on the planning. I don't know if we'll manage that again, but. <laughs> All right, planning page 72. So the first line salaries and wages mm -hmm. um, last year. Uh, so there's an increase. We asked a question following up on the office manager position because that um, went up when in fact last year we, we were told that it would they were going to try and hire at a lower level um, but they weren't able to and it got put off to HR and just said the higher number is what HR needed in order to hire somebody for the position so um, there was <coughs> that uh, and then the longevity is just the a decrease from the change uh, from the previous year because the um, last year's budget, the current planning director uh, got put in place after last year's budget started, um, was already printed. Mm -hmm. So she was there I think, two weeks. <laughs> right. She two weeks. I think when we interviewed her, she'd been in the position she for two weeks her. last year. So she, she wasn't familiar with the budget and those numbers mm -hmm. are. Um, were based on her predecessor, so that's why there's a change in longevity because um, that was her predecessor's uh, longevity or in previous year from 2022 mm -hmm. actual. And then the big decrease is just uh, the directors. And if I could, the uh, line 5160, the stipends that's a, a stipend that is paid for a, 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 an actually they call it, they're in this, they call it a stipend, but it's it's a, a fee that is charged for work done for the conservation committee, uh, a private vendor. Um, they do measurements or something for the conservation committee. So that's what that 825 is. And then uh, expenses, um, the 5203, last year it was a desk, this year it's office equipment <laughs> for the $500. The auto allowance is um, for allowance for going around and looking at the, the sites, etc. I 
dues and subscriptions are based on the employees and the, the types of uh, specialties they have and, and where they have to be accredited. The training, similarly, so the training was a big increase. Um, last year, we were told that it would increase. We were warned, and the hope was that it would be uh, to cover per diems and the stays in addition to the actual fees for the training. Um, uh, I think we were told this year, it's not actually what's happening. This is actually more training because they have noticed the town meeting members. Um, I duly informed on, on issues, especially on zoning and planning and development. Okay. So they, they, have, they, are. <laughs> they make, want to make sure that their staff is equally as uplifted. And town meeting <laughs> members. <laughs> so this is so that they can answer all the town meeting member questions. Um, <laughs> Everything else is uh, basically level and no changes. Um, no. We asked about the status of economic development, which is a, uh, one of the questions we always ask. Last year, they uh, mentioned needing more teeth and penalties for vacant uh, properties, and there is a warrant article. I think they mentioned that. It's going to be, yeah. They put in a warrant. Right. They want to. Um, Change the policy and make a little more strength in the wording of the policy, plus increase the fines. Right, because it's not really and having the effect that we used intended. examples of vacant space in this in the center. Mm -hmm. So there's some mm -hmm. examples like Papa Gino's that's been mm -hmm. vacant and uh, Tango, Tango on the other side of Mass Ave, and there's a uh, Chinese restaurant on um, <coughs> Method Street. Mm -hmm. Well, in the planning, did they're going to put apartments on top of where Papaginos is, and mm -hmm. that's all going to be rehab. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go around the corner to somewhere mm -hmm. a little bit down Memphis Street, includes the Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. One of the problems they're having right now is the people who lease the Chinese restaurant will not release the lease until the lease expires. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, why? Who knows? But Where that's a hang up. Tango on the other side, they've been having, uh, th there's been people interested in renting that space. Mm -hmm. But I guess uh, the owner of the property is, is somewhat contentious. It, yeah. it just, and it's, it's, it's every time someone tries to rent it, they get into some type of discussion with the owner and it does not. Mm -hmm. and, and they also have plans on um, the heights. Business district has been broken down into seven different type business districts within the heights itself. So they're taking a look at the heights and see how they can, uh, what they can do to draw different types of business in, into the heights. And, and, and while they're doing that, East Arlington now is running into a situation with some of the restaurants that were down there for that's that are not they're not here anymore. That, that's, so now that's created as different empty spaces in East Arlington. But it's, it's like it's sick. It goes in a circle. Uh, so that's what's, good. that's what's going on there. So that was uh, training office supplies. The 5236 Conservation Commission expenses, it's the same as every year. It's explained as being the wetland permit fees and the local fees. There's a Conservation Commission offset um, down below. This is also MACC training, which is regulatory um, because this is regulatory body, we need specific training um, to be able to work with the conservation commission. So that covers those costs. And 5354 is the technology economic development. Um, this is the dashboards and the software to keep track of the vacancies. Um, so I think that um, there was at some point that had lapsed, but I don't I, the money is there for the contract to run that system and that dashboard to track vacancies in town. So with that, we recommend the approval of the planning taxation total of 655,539. Second. Any questions, Peggy? Um, thank you. Um, can you explain the offsets in this budget? Is that the 
find from empty spaces? No, the offset. So, for example, the Conservation Commission offset is for work done for the Conservation Commission. Uh, see, see, same with all of those. It's work done by the Planning Development Board for those. Well, the CDBG, some of the CDBG funds are allowed to be used for administration. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the CDBG budget for the administrative that. offset, right? Uh -huh. But I think the school <clears throat> offset is work done for the school committee. And that's some kind of shared position. Did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie Mentofa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair. Um, so, for example, in the recent uh, discussion leading up to the town meeting uh, for the zoning changes, there are obviously, uh, I think there were consultants used to provide some of the input to that point. And, and there's been consultants used in other recent projects by the planning department. Where is the money coming from for these consultants? Um, I think we were told before, sometimes they have grants. They have grants, different, different plans. They have a number of different grants, grants from other different mm -hmm. projects. Thank you. Okay. Answer my question. Other questions? Uh, sometimes, uh, as we go back to the site, if it's not grants, sometimes it's also a line item in the, maybe one of our other budgets, like expenses, like town meeting approves X amount. Or Warren article. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So if it's not one, it's the other. All right. So we have a motion for 655, 539 has been seconded. Second. Yeah. Still just No, I just want to respond. Charlie, there's some there's some money for consultants on the capital budget too. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else anyone has? All right. All in favor of the motion for 655-539, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, unanimous. All right, we have only four minutes late. We have one more. Town manager, though. Oh, redevelopment. Oh, redevelopment board. Can you do redevelopment board? Can you do redevelopment three minutes? Yeah. All right, go for it. Eight. 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 Oh, well, it's a one with a increase <laughs> what yeah so the the one question we had on redevelopment board um and did you get an answer on this one you want to wait to wait on this one no we can we can i mean folks have questions that we can answer and try because i just don't remember this is on page 76. Right, 76. So 76. it's the redevelopment board that comes under the direction of the planning uh, director. And, uh, and the only, <laughs> yeah, so there's just a $2,000 increase for advertising and print. Right. I Second, second. All right. Any questions? All right. All in favor of uh, 12, moving to approve 12,800, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The time is unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. We have one left and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Sorry. So the town so we have the town manager's budget. All right, we have the town manager's budget, and we have library and so we have libraries and rec and rink ready to go. We also have at our meeting with Health and Human Services, which includes AYCC, Council on Aging, uh, DEI, veterans, veterans uh, Council on Aging Transportation. So if you have questions about any of those budgets please get an email to Rebecca or I soon because we will be doing them either Wednesday or next Monday, depending on the answers to some questions we already have. So we'd like to get your questions answered at the same time.
Yeah. So we will be meeting with the town manager on Wednesday. Then with the time we have left, we'll go back to you, Dave and Sophie, and then we'll turn to you, uh, Rebecca and Annie to see how far we can get. And then whenever we don't finish, we'll do a pick up on Monday when we do the police, fire, and inspection services and any other budgets. I will check with people on Wednesday to see what budgets may be done next week. Anything anyone has before we adjourn? Thank you very much, Dave and Sophie, and I'm going to back in Annie. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, these budgets ready so quickly, and I think we really are starting um, well um, to get our stuff done. Um, All right, thank you. Can I just point out?